Hi everyone, I'm Scrambled McFeezen. I, there's nothing on this. It's too hot to drink coffee. I need something for this. Is there a space cake left? May I have some space cake? But first, these words from our sponsors, us. Well, now that uh, you've wasted that much of your life, let's talk about the news. Intel has their new 8th gen processors coming out, and here's the deal. Competition's good, y'all. So AMD, they released, uh, you know, Ryzen and Threadripper. They're pushing the core count. And uh, we live in a world right now where the core counts have been hovering around four for 40 years. No, it's been, it feels like about 40 years, but Intel has kept the core count low on all the consumer, uh, just mainstream products. You can get more if you go buy the, the X99 stuff or whatever. But they've kept the core count at four because you know what? They don't have any competition. They've been pushing frequency and they've really been pushing efficiency, but well, four cores, well, who cares? Now with the eighth gen that's uh, gonna be announced later in the month, they are announcing a six core. And other than that, it's still 14 nanometers. It's not gonna be that different. Was it Coffee Bay or whatever it is? Coffee Creek, Coffee, yeah, Coffee Lake. That's what it is, Coffee Bay, Creek, Lake. I don't know, beer. Thank you, AMD, for these new Intel processors. Now that Intel is moving to more cores, maybe we can see uh, I guess better adoption of multi-threading because right now companies like Adobe uh, and a lot of the game designers and stuff like that they're making games for just two or three cores and like whatever I mean even you, you see like the Adobe the Creative Suite yeah it benefits when you're doing rendering and stuff like that but it just doesn't really scale well with multiple cores not like it should not like the audio editing programs I use when I'm using my audio editing programs I've got a Xeon I watch each core activate as I add more layers and more effects it's a beautiful thing so hopefully we'll see uh, I, I guess the future as a place where people look at it and go hmm there's a lot of cores let's use all those freaking cores what really happened with Intel is they got complacent they're like we don't have any competition we've got four cores AMD's little eight core can barely keep up with our four core that's more expensive. We ain't gotta do shit. No, okay, have you seen the time? It's ramp 30, Logan. It is ramp 30. Guys, the FCC, they're just trying to kill the internet. And I know everybody in Estonia right now is looking at America and just kind of, well, they're either giggling, chortling, guffawing, or maybe it's a pure belly laugh. I don't know what stage it's in. I think it's somewhere in the guffaw stage right now. So the FCC, um, they have the task of making sure that everyone in America gets decent broadband access. And they're supposed to make sure that it's rolling out to everybody. And everyone was guaranteed both a physical connection and a connection on the phone. But now the new idiots, freaking uh, illegitimate pie or whatever his name is, legit pie, a, a jit pie. I don't know. Make up some jokes, please do it for me can't be bothered. This dude is now so in the pocket of, or he's so in the, in the ass, the pocket, I don't know. Where should we put him? He's in the ass pocket. He's in the pocket. <laughs> AT and t and Comcast and Verizon and all those guys. And they just, number one, they hate that neutrality. But number two, they really don't like the fact that they have to run infrastructure to everybody. That's like, ugh, we're gonna have to spend all, some of this money that we're hoarding to buy each other. Ugh. And what are we going to do with all this? You know, we don't want to spend it on actual, actually upgrading our services for the modern era. Everyone is uh, guaranteed, or not guaranteed, but they say that you, everyone should have a 25 megabit um, by three up connection. Well, right now they're saying, listen, the whole home connection, we don't think people really need that. All people need is a phone. They just need a phone connection or a mobile connection. And if they're out in the middle of nowhere and they don't have connection, well, we can just throw a little, you know, 3G or 4G antenna on their, on their roof. And as long as they're getting... 10 by one, 10 down by one up. That should be good enough because nobody needs any more than that, right? That's that's where we are right now with the freaking FCC. They think 10 by one and yes, everyone in Estonia, it is totally cool to laugh at us and point. The people running the show are actually doing tons of damage to future generations. If we don't get the infrastructure in place right now, we are not gonna keep up with the modern uh, infrastructure in the rest of the world, so. Next up, AT&T, they're saying that this whole, you know, net neutrality thing, well, we need to get rid of it because we need fast lanes and slow lanes because what if someone's watching Netflix and then someone else is trying to call a first responder like an ambulance or something, but there's just so many people playing video games and watching Netflix that the ambulance couldn't come and the guy choked to death on his bubble gum. It happens, guys. No, it doesn't. So that's what AT&T is saying, that's, which, which is really interesting when you think about this because AT&T is saying, 
Yeah, we, we need to make sure that we have fast lanes for the first responders. AT&T was just given 6.5 billion, with a capital holy shit, dollars to create FirstNet, which is like the first responders network. It's a wireless network for them. So they've got all this money for them, and they're, you know, they're saying, you know, the people need to be able to contact it. But guys, are you serious? I mean, have we ever had... Uh, is this even an issue? Uh, it looks like they're trying... It looks like they're kicking and screaming to be able to control, you know, all of the internet traffic, do whatever they like with it, charge fees on both ends, and they don't want to upgrade their infrastructure. So... Guys, uh, at these companies, where does the money go? Someone who works at these companies, where does the money go? Is it just set aside for uh, corporate, uh, I guess, bonuses? Or is it set aside so that they can buy each other? You know, buy, let's say AT&T, let's buy Verizon. No, let's Verizon, let's buy Comcast. No, Comcast is not going to do that. Let's buy the government. That's the best idea. I don't know what's going on with all that stuff. Right, let's loosen up a little bit here and talk about uh, drones that could kill us. How epic was that? So Duke Robotics is developing a drone, and they already have a big order uh, from the uh, from Israel, I guess. So this drone is going to be able to fly around with, uh, you know, machine guns or whatever, and take out targets with surgical accuracy. Now, they're talking about this like this. It's the baddest thing ever. And also, I mean, there's something good here. Human lives will not be at stake except for the lives that we're killing. But they don't count because they're the wrong shade of whatever color they are or something. You know, that's they don't count, right? That's how it works, right? First off, it's a drone. It's gonna to need to be controlled somehow. So let's look at the whole scenario, right? These things could become the future cops and everything else. And it's not like a robot. So it's not just gonna be able to fly, you know, to walk around. They can fly anywhere. It can get places where people cannot go. It can go basically any freaking where. This is about to get a whole lot more serious, guys. Right here, this next article right here. Biohackers have encoded uh, malware in a strand of DNA. Now here's the way this works, they've actually put malware into DNA. DNA apparently is a great place to store stuff. So they put some malware into the DNA and then when you come up with a DNA uh, sequencer or whatever and you read that back, it writes some malicious code and therefore allows them to take over the computer. It's pretty far-fetched, but listen up. We're talking like 10 years in the future here, right? Because this is all the forefront of what's to come. So 10 years in the future, we're gonna have these drones, right? And uh, they're gonna have some biological elements more than likely. Could be, could be. These hackers are gonna be able to hack the DNA that goes into these drones. They're also gonna be able to hack the software that go into these drones. So if it's a sleeper software, all they gotta do is wait until it's installed, roll it out to the entire fleet, which could be millions of these things. And then they can press a button and do whatever the hell they want. Not only that, so this whole DNA sequencing thing, right now they're just using the DNA to hack the computers that read the DNA. But in the future, with all the biohacking out there, they could do this the other way around. So that the drone thing aside. So they got their army of drones, they can do something with that. They can hold the populace hostage or whatever. But let's look at the, the, the biological side because, you know, designer babies, probably gonna be a thing one of these days. Uh, hacking our own DNA could possibly be a thing one of these days. Let's say uh, we have some neural implants or other implants that interface with machines and interface with computers. Well, not only can they hack the software that's used to connect those things, now they can have that software possibly hack your DNA. So how about this? You guys want a zombie movie plot? Here, I got one for you. Instead of having regular zombies, you have a bunch of people who are like, you know, the elites of the world who have enough money to get hacked, right? They've hacked their brains, they've hacked their bodies, they've got superhuman strength and stuff, very deus ex. Someone rolls out a virus that will hack their very DNA. And then, maybe call it the rage virus or something, I don't know, is that already a thing? It's basically, you take Resident Evil and Gattaca and shake it up, but it hasn't been done just yet. Soon. And then there you go. Alright, it's time to go look at some, uh, some games, I think. But first, a word from Doug. In ancient Egypt, crocodile poop was used as a contraceptive, while in ancient China, women would drink mercury to prevent pregnancy. Coincidentally, if you combine mercury and crocodile poop, you get poison crocodile poop. I'm so glad we did that. I think. Let's go check out uh, what games we're playing. Tell us everything about whatever the hell you're playing. I am playing Sign More EX, which is a bullet hell. Kind of, it's got your standard elements of a lot of these games, you know, power-ups with your ships and everything, bombs and whatever. Um, yeah, it looks like fun. Yeah. So, the neat thing about this game is that it looks 
really fucking good. Yeah, fully like, 3D world, yeah. I can tell here. Um, so my initial reaction to this was I kind of wish that this was 3D. Like, er, in the sense that, like, I could fly around the 3D world, kind of like all range mode in Star Fox. Uh, like, immediately I was kind of like, this would be so much greater if I could fly around everything. But it's super duper fun, and it's got some neat extra mechanics into it. One of the big ones is, uh, the time slow mechanic. Here I got time slow. And this You'll is... You'll probably need when you get yeah, to... Yeah, when you get to, helmet. like, big boss stuff, time slow saves your life. Pretty neat story about betrayal and death and... Uh, nuclear war and anthropomorphized people. Ooh, what the hell's happening right now? This thing, I don't know. <laughs> the 3D elements look so cool that it switches yeah, back to the 2D. It, and it makes you wish you could play the Central. whole game in the 3D element, you know? Alright. So, one of the neat things about this is that's done through multiple characters in the same storyline. So, a lot of the times you'll be playing through a part of the level, and then the next step of the level will be what was going on on the surface at the same time that was going on on the inside while you were just playing in the previous level. So it's neat how they the multiple story angles... Oh, is this multiplayer? It is multiplayer. That's there is a co-op version. People that are either fans of the Shmup series, you know, any people that really enjoy games like this would be a great, you know, it's a good installment for something like that. Also, if this is your first time getting into a game like this, this would also be great for you. But if you're look, if you're easily infuriated by tougher difficulty things and are prone to rage quitting, this might not be for you. Uh, Fallout's got a board game coming out. Yeah. And uh, I'm not going to really talk much about it, but I think we should see if we should get a copy of this for the, one of the analog segments where we check out some games. Hmm. What do you think? think it could be good, the setting? Could be good. Um, a lot of times, video game based board games can be really hit or miss in terms of like either they're trying to keep it too much like playing the video game and then it ends up falling flat rules wise or a lot of the times when they're you know kind of smarter about it is they will just be like so it's themed after fallout 4 but we're taking a mechanic that's actually fun and just kind of giving it a fallout 4 flavor to right. it and that usually ends up making for a more exciting board game so we'll have to see hopefully we can get a copy of it take a look it's using the special system and mm -hmm. uh, and a little bit of vats so that'll be interesting yep. to see how they they combine those two mm -hmm. could be fun who knows i mean i think vats would be cool because it's turn-based already i mean the original fallouts were turn-based <laughs> <laughs> Agencies in South Carolina are saying that there's possible Lizard Man and Bigfoot. Agencies? What agencies? Uh, the ones that know what they're talking about. Apparently, we're going to see a huge upswing in Lizard Men sightings in South Carolina during the eclipse. They seem to live in places where superstitions are still thought of as normal. You guys in South Carolina are fucking dumb. <laughs> I grew up in Kentucky. Where, Send a lizard folk after where us. We got Sasquatches, too. They put, they call them like sun squanches or something like that in the picture. Sun squanches? Yeah, if you grow up for like sun squanch. Uh, yeah, wonder, right there, okay. right there. Sun right squatch. Sun, not sasquatch. Oh, that's for the path of the sun squatch? Yeah, the sun squatch is a relative of the sasquatch, known to be much friendlier mm. than the sasquatch. So. I want to know whom among our viewers is going to be out there dressed as a lizard man or a sasquatch sauntering around <laughs> in the wilderness. Be careful. In certain areas, you may get shot. You will get shot. 30 out 6 to the ribs. <laughs> We're trying to skin you. <laughs> All right. Have drop leaf. Uh, check this out. There's a yeah. new platform right here. Mm -hmm. An indie game kind of client that's coming out is Drop Leaf. And they are a subscription based service that's going to have. In all, uh, like a smattering of all different kinds of games that you can have access to. So the neat thing about this one is that they're really focused on getting a lot of like unknowns and stuff like that. And they're also trying to make sure that they're representing a lot of like diversity within uh, game designers and things like that. So they're looking to find, you know, like lady game designers and uh, game designers from other countries that might not be as popular around here. You know, people from all sorts of different communities, things like that. But what they want to do is try to make a very all-inclusive community that really displays like the wide range of, of games available for everyone to play. We want to know what you think about it. It's it's neat. It's yeah. got, you know, it's a monthly subscription. And currently they don't have, like, tons and tons of games on there. But they're working on getting more. Like, they are brand new and the beta's up right now and everything like that. So you can take a look at it. But they do plan on adding, like, 10 to 20 more games a month. I think the one thing that's interesting about this one is, you know, when you compare it to, like, uh, the direction that Steam's going mm -hmm. and some of the other uh, options out there, is that this one is very curated. Whereas a lot of them now are just, like, anybody who... Has a couple dollars can jump jump on there and upload their game and just whatever mm -hmm. there there it is it, mm -hmm. here, here's our game i think that 
total just open ability to upload games is cool, mm -hmm. which is different than this because it allows you to anyone to get a game out there, no matter what and how, and no matter how much the game sucks, it's going to make. But, but the downside from that is you're going to make a crowded marketplace, so you'll have to rely upon word of mouth and reviews, and it can get very confusing. So there's mm -hmm. a give and take there. Whereas this is completely curated, so you know that someone has given it the go-ahead to go on this platform. So if you want more of a curated experience, that'll be that. All right, moving right along, the All Controller. Guys, check this this thing out. Um, it's a controller that basically they say controls every Everything. game pretty much ever. You can set it up with dongles for your consoles. You can plug it into your PC, your Android, your iOS. Um, it's got drivers that you can load for all that stuff. It comes preloaded with a bunch of drivers already. And this, the, the reason why we're showing this is it got met all of its pledge goals in like, 30 seconds or something. Everybody wants like, this. Not not actually 30 seconds, but this was one of the most like fasted, funded thing. Fasted is not a word. Fasted? Yeah, the funding was fasted, and it was funded bigly. Again, this is another thing that we want to know what you guys think about this. Uh, the, the price is a little high. Yeah. The, but for what it does. Yeah. Price to what it can do? What do you think? Even mouse and keyboard. Mm -hmm. You can emulate those. Yeah, they, they state in the video that it can play any game. Any game. Even if it doesn't have uh, controller support originally for it or anything like that, it can operate as your mouse and keyboard overlay in front of the game instead. I wanted to play any game on any platform. I want to play the games on, on TurboGrafx-16 mm. with an adapter to plug into my TurboGrafx-16. Shadow of Mordor. The, uh, I guess, well, not Mordor, Shadow of War, the new Shadow one's coming out, right? Shadow of War. Door. Shadow of War door. Uh, so I, I guess the overlords over at Warner Brothers have come to Monolith Studios and were like, we want to make money every time someone sneezes. And I, you know what? I got to hand it to these guys. They are really taking care of the 1%. Yeah, thank God someone's finally looking out for the 1%. You know, they're such a small percent, it's like no one actually thinks about them. Yeah. So this is really good. So basically they're going to be offering loot boxes that you can pay money to get to unlock armor and things like that for your characters. Yeah, let, which, let me tell you what you're going to unlock here. You yeah. can, you can, it says that you can like unlock, you know, just regular stuff, mm -hmm. but... Certain boxes will have like, you know, weapons, armor, XP and bonuses. XP bonuses and stuff like that. Sounds like the deal train. But I mean, this is going to be, you know, single player game and also it's not as bad as when you have it like multiplayer and stuff. So basically it just means rich kids won't have to spend as much time playing this. Thank yeah. God. I remember playing the original Shadow of Mordor and I would just, I, I could barely sleep at night thinking that some rich kid somewhere has to go through all of the side quests that I went through to unlock the the full potential of the dagger. Can you imagine that? It's just not fair. I know they've got to like wash their Ferraris and and they've got to like they've got rich other friends that yeah. they have to like impress. They have to go buy like really expensive umbrellas to up their friends. And where we expect them to spend all this time playing a game? We're monsters. Thank God they're finally looking out. Thank you, Warner Brothers and Monolith, for. Keeping us out of their mm -hmm. league. Yeah. You know, I don't throw around the word hero regularly, but... <laughs> Alright, PC Gamer, this is the last thing I want to chew on. I want to hear from you guys in the audience. PC Gamer has made a list of nine games that need Battle Royale because everyone's going crazy about uh, player unknowns. The first thing that I thought when I was playing that game was like, holy shit, this game's clunky. I wish we could do this in Far Cry 4. We made it almost the entire show without talking about PUBG. I'm really proud of us. Turned off ad block for two mm -hmm. seconds on this yeah, stupid website. Look at this thing. Yeah. What, what has happened to PC Gamer? Seriously. Sorry, PC Gamer. This is obnoxious. Happening. I mean, I trusted you for one minute. You brought this upon yourselves. You have yep. no one to blame but you. I told you I don't like to be touched in my inner thigh. And what did you do? Here's their list. Assassin's <laughs> Creed. Why is that on there? Dark Souls. I don't... Guys, maybe you think... Uh, Assassin's Creed has a cool universe, I guess, but Dark Souls? <laughs> GTA Online, I can totally understand. Far Cry 5 is probably going to have that mode. I don't even know. Yeah. That's my favorite one on their list. Ghost Recon Wildlands? Yes. Uh, we actually played that a while back on the stream, and it was a lot of fun. I... It feels, I mean, the, 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 the play mechanics of the game, where the third person to, th to, to first person, mm -hmm. feels already like Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, except it's way smoother. Like yeah. the gameplay, the combat, the aiming, just everything is way smoother. And their vehicle mechanics were a little more solid, too, it felt like. Yep. Yeah. The division makes sense mm -hmm. as well. I put Stalker on the list because it's like the original clunky game with all kinds of Russian stuff, mm -hmm. but, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, what, what game did you have bring up here? I, I even though we made fun of its successor uh, earlier, <laughs> but uh, Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor would actually be pretty solid for that. You know, if you set it so that people could play as orcs and all kinds of other creatures and kind of leveled out the power structures that they all have similar abilities and things like that. 
I think it'd be really fun. It'd probably be a, a separate game that they could develop entirely, because right now they've developed this entire game around the whatever the special, or no, no, sorry, Nemesis System special mm-hmm. the, the, from Fallout. So they'd have to just create a game where you just deck out your work, but I'm worried that if they created this game, A would be pay to win, and they'd be like, pay here to buff your orc, you know, yeah. like that kind of stuff. So I don't trust you guys anymore. You've also touched me in my inner thigh. Mm-hmm. Dying Light should be on that list because mm-hmm. the smooth parkour movement, the amazing graphics, uh, the fluidity of the world, that should be on the list, yep. I think. Uh, here's one that's going to be surprising. I think it'd be really interesting to have a Battle Royale style game like FTL. So people are probably going like, what, what do you mean by that? Well, in FTL, you jump around, you know, solar uh, star systems or whatever, just have one ginormous star system, and uh, as you move from place to place to distress call to store to you know whatever all the different little points on the map are mm-hmm. as you move you're encountering real humans with real ships uh, and sometimes you will encounter them sometimes you won't I think a lot of the I think the map mm-hmm. should be big enough that a lot of it's empty and you're able to explore and look around and gather stuff upgrade your ship um, and also maybe get power-ups that allow you to send out distress beacons so there can be real distress beacons that give you massive rewards like big mm-hmm. big rewards but also, what if the player could throw out a distress beacon and then be hiding there to ambush or something? Mm. That would be interesting. I think it would be a very interesting, different kind of game. So what games would you guys out there like to see uh, mm. as like a battle royale mode? Because everyone kept saying that like Dark Souls, that, that whole genre of games was going to be the next thing because there's so many games coming out that are similar to Dark Souls. Uh, but now I think that uh, Battlegrounds, the whole battle royale thing, that's going to be the next fad for the next couple of years. Just yeah. watch. You're going to see mods and like games and like rip-offs and some games may do do the combat better some games may do one thing better and then who knows that's pretty much it guys get on those t-shirts right now you got one get those t-shirts yes get it down go to the forum or i'll whip your ass with a fish all right see you guys on the forum bye everybody